Honestly, I have a headache just thinking about this. <laughs> Everything we went through. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be this big of a fight to get a company that promises a service to provide said service. Just nope. Unacceptable. I am Sarah, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet, and today I am addressing the entire topic of home warranties. I bought a duplex a year ago. It was a $230,000 duplex in College Station, Texas. I am house hacking it, aka living in one side, renting out the other, so I am now a landlord, and it's been a really great experience so far, honestly. Overall, great experience. One of the things that my real estate agent recommended during the house purchase was that to get the sellers to pay for a home warranty, just in case anything major happens within the first you know, year of you having the house, it's to offset kind of anything that they might have left not in great condition or that breaks suddenly and then you don't necessarily have to pay for the full cost of the repair or the replacement. You only have to pay like a service fee to this company. So she got them to pay for a one year American Home Shield Shield Plus warranty. And the cost of that was $795. And here's what it was supposed to cover. Air conditioning, built-in microwaves, clothes washer, clothes dryer, one kitchen refrigerator, dishwasher, stuff work, electrical, garbage disposal, heating, improper installations, repairs, or modification, insufficiently maintained equipment, mismatched systems, plumbing, plumbing stoppages, presence of rust and corrosion, ranges, ovens, cooktops, re-keys, refrigerant recapture, reclaim and disposal, removal of defective equipment, undetectable pre-existing conditions, and water heaters. Which is a pretty comprehensive thing. There were a few things they said they didn't cover. For instance, when we had the Texas winter storms, they sent out an email being like, hey, you're going to have to contact your insurance company on that because we we aren't doing that. <laughs> Anything that broke during that, you had to go through your insurance, home insurance. So when I was out searching for properties during that whole process, we had everything inspected. Various people came out, made sure that there was nothing major hiding that, you know, there hadn't been a fire that was covered up or anything that we, they thought would just explode on us or essentially make the house not worth what it was. Everything came back pretty good. There were a few things that were noted that we either just decided to fix ourselves or try to get the sellers to pay for it. And they paid for a couple of things, so they didn't pay for a couple of things and everything was fine. Utilizing this home warranty was just kind of a benefit to the process. They weren't gonna get come down on the price $800 otherwise, so fun thing to have. And I did utilize it. I actually called in nine service requests. <laughs> I ended up only using them for six or seven, but I called in nine service requests. And every time you do a service request, you have to pay a $75 fee if they end up coming out. You get refunded if they cancel it. But that is supposedly all you will have to pay if you utilize the home warranty which can be really good because for instance, if your fridge breaks and you only have to pay $75 to get it replaced, fridge is like 1500 bucks. <laughs> the home warranty that I got, American Home Shield, was really good over the past year for some things and they were really, really not good for some others. And I've gotten this question so many times on the channel, anytime I've mentioned it, do you recommend home warranties? And I'm gonna tell you <laughs> what I recommend them for, what I don't recommend them for and why. And kind of my experience in the last year dealing with and utilizing my home warranty. And if I will be renewing my home warranty at my own cost, which would be $85 a month or $1,020 for the year, for the upcoming year as my plan expires. By the way, if you like talking money, the pros, the cons, what can save you money, what is a waste of money, go ahead and like this channel and subscribe because I'm on my way to 100,000 subscribers. I've been working on this for seven years on YouTube and I love being here. I love being with you guys and I would love to see my channel continue to grow. So it's free and I would appreciate it. So let's go over the service requests and the experiences that I had with them on these individual things and then some notes of other stuff that you might wanna know about a home warranty before you sign up for one. So the very first service request that I called in was in June. And very shortly after I purchased the property, I had a call from the renters and they said their garbage disposal was broken. Went over, couldn't fix it myself. And so I called the home warranty, paid the $75. I came out within just like a couple of days completely replaced the unit and I only had to pay the 75 bucks. That was absolutely awesome because that would have been several hundred dollars in parts and labor. One, me, home warranty zero, <laughs> in my opinion, because that was about a $200 savings 
I would say, one to 200 bucks. It was pretty simple. Most home warranties actually use local servicemen. They're not like dispatching people that just work for them. So they're just calling a local company the same as you would and sending someone out, but they're just handling all the payment for it. So this one was excellent <laughs> and yay, home warranty for that. The second one, and I actually called them twice for plumbing related issues, once in July of 2020 and once in August of 2020. The first one is not on them. This one is on me. <laughs> when I got a washer and dryer for my side of the unit, Jacob installed them. We screwed everything in and on together. And when we turned on the water, water sprayed everywhere. And he said he tightened it, but he didn't want to strip it. So we put in a home warranty request, paid the 75 bucks. Someone came out and he proceeded to pretend this is a wrench. And he just tightened it a little and it was, that was it. I blame them for nothing for this. The, the plumber that came out was hilarious. He was such a good sport and I know better for next time. I didn't actually even like try to fuss with it myself. I just trusted Jacob in that he said he turned it on and it sprayed and I was like, okay, if we have a pipe leak or something, let's just call a professional. <laughs> I did. That was probably not necessary, but yeah, one, one, and I don't blame them for that at all. The second time I had a plumber come out was in August and it was because there was an issue over on the renter side where when she was turning on the master bathroom shower, about half was coming out of the shower head and about half was still coming out of the spigot. So guy came out, he fixed that. And while he was there, and this was a little home warranty trick. If you call for one issue, you could get it done on both sides, which was nice because he was able to fix that on that side. And he was able to come over to my side and fix my shower handle, which had been installed upside down on my shower. And the way it was installed was you could either turn it to hundred percent cold or hundred percent hot, but you couldn't get anywhere in between. So I have like the, the type that's a handle, but it was installed up. So I could go 100% cold or 100% hot, but I, it didn't like, there was no moderation. So he was able to flip that upside down. In retrospect, that is probably something I could have figured out how to do on my own, but I'm honestly really glad he did it. They were dealing with tile. There were lots of little screws and it was outside the area of my expertise or knowledge. Happy to outsource that, especially since we got two things fixed in one shot. To me, one warranty. <laughs> Next up, I called them twice for a C repair. And one of these times I had to cancel and I'll get into that in a second. The first time in June of 2020, I called them because the air conditioner cut out and I couldn't figure out how to use it. The home that I moved into already had like a Nest thermostat installed, which was new to both Jacob and I. We're used to the old janky ones and it just quit working for some reason. So that was an option in the system where you could have someone come out that was like a smart thermostat repair person and he determined that it was the smart thermostat and that we should get it changed through Nest. Actually, in retrospect, I don't know why he didn't change it because I was, was paying the $75 fee, but we were able to call Nest, get them to send us a new one at no fee, but we had to pay the $75 fee and then it worked. So we had tried everything on our own. Jacob's actually really good at that kind of thing. He installed the Nest on the renter side, but we had tried everything and it wasn't working. <laughs> it was a defective one that just defuncted for some reason. So home warranty to me too for keeping score, which I am always. The second time I had to call them for AC was actually on moving day from our old apartment to this new house and the AC went out for no apparent reason. I put in a request and they said it would be two weeks before an AC repair person could come out. It was moving day in June in Texas and it was extremely hot and we had to get out of our old apartment. We were moving all the furniture and everything. There were professional moving people involved. It couldn't wait two weeks. Uh, it was extremely, it was like a hundred degrees that day. Uh, so we ended up having to cancel that ACS request and call a local AC person and pay, I think 350 bucks for them to come out and flush the system and why we now add some bleach to like the catch basin system once a month so algae and stuff doesn't grow and get it stopped up. This is not an issue on the other side of the rental or on the rental side because it's like a closed system, which seems far superior in my opinion. But yeah, we just, we just put a couple bleach down every month or so to make sure that nothing grows there. By the way, my side air conditioner system is only like three or four years old. The one on the other side is like 15 years old. So I don't know why the one that's on our side takes that much more maintenance, but it does. Anyway, yeah, there was algae in the system. It overloaded it, wouldn't let it fill. The local repair guy was able to do it, but there was like a $350 fee out of our pocket. So because it took that long, <laughs> our AHS, three, us two. 
And then I didn't call in any warranties for like six months. But in January of this year, 2021, I called them because the agitator in my washer just kind of like came out and the pieces that held it in place were just kind of in the laundry. <laughs> now you can actually still use the washer if the agitator comes out. They have agitatorless washers. It's just not quite as effective. So I put in a request, they came out, they ordered a part, and I didn't hear from them on that for three months. At the same time, I also, because of the whole, you can get them to look at two things in the same field at the same time, I was like, it's taking like three times to run the dryer to get everything dry. So take a look at that as well while you're here. And they decided that they needed, it needed a new timer, which would help it heat better or something. A, it's been a few months and B, I don't remember what they said, but they were gonna order a part <laughs> and get back to us whenever it came in. So here's the thing. American Owned Home Shield has their own part warehouse. So while when you have service people come out, it's local people, they aren't allowed to purchase parts wherever they normally source them to fix the problem. I'm sure there are like levels or something where if it's something small, like I guess a garbage disposal, you can just replace it. But anything bigger than that, like an agitator part or a dryer part has to be ordered through American Home Shield. They source their parts out of somewhere. And when it comes to their warehouse, they send it on to the specialist and then they come out and replace it. However, because I believe theory, they're sourcing these parts from all over the world, the cheapest they can possibly get it, there's often a breakdown and a great, great, great amount of time where your appliance is going to be down, which is why it took three months for me to finally get them to say, this has been a little long on the agitator. It only took about two months for the dryer part to come in. The we're, we're gonna get to it. <laughs> the dryer did end up getting a timer and a foot replaced because it was missing a foot. And that took about two months where unfortunately the dryer was working before, but once they came out and looked at it, it quit working entirely. So we were without a working dryer for several weeks, which is not the worst thing in the world. Um, it's not like a fridge, get to that. <laughs> but it was not convenient at all. And every time I called them, I'd get just like the first level of service representative who are like, oh, it's on order. It's, it should be there in six to 10 days. Or they'd just lie to me and be like, yeah, we already sent it out. And then I'd call the local appliance repair place and they're like, no, we haven't heard from them at all. We haven't gotten anything from them. Like you, <laughs> the, the first level of service people at this home warranty company made me cry multiple times. Well, get into it more. So washer and dryer <laughs> cut to March. I still don't have uh, the washer part. And on March 2nd, two days into my rental reno, my fridge goes out. Now the February 2021 winter storms had all of Texas in a huge fun situation where our power was circling on and off just constantly, or in some cases it was out for areas for days. We were lucky enough that the longest we ever had with that power was about 14 hours. And then for the most part, it would, we were on the rolling blackout schedule of a couple hours off, an hour on, a couple hours off, half an hour on kind of thing. So during that time, we were actually able to keep, you know, the fridge closed, keep everything in there cold. But a few days after, I guess the, I want to say flux capacitor, and I know there's not a flux capacitor in my fridge. It's either a compressor or a condenser that went out. I will never get it right which part that is. They sound too similar. I think it's a compressor. The fridge compressor went out. It might as well be a flux capacitor. <laughs> so I immediately call home warranty We when we realized the fridge wasn't cooling. And they're like, okay, it'll be about a week and a half, two weeks before we can get someone out there. I don't find this super acceptable, but at the same time, a new fridge is expensive. So I'm like, okay, how can we speed this along? I actually call the people I bought the fridge from and they're like, for 40 bucks, you know, you bought it from here, we'll send a, a person out to at least diagnose it, tell you what's wrong. So they come out, they say it's the flux capacitor. So I call the home warranty, or I call the appliance people that have been assigned to come out in like a week and a half, two weeks. And I'm like, hey, I had someone come out. They say it's the compressor. Can you like bring a part can you bring a compressor when you come so we can like speed this along? And they're like, oh, we don't work on flux capacitors. We just, we don't. So I'm like, oh, well, that's good to know. I call the home warranty. I'm like, the people you assigned don't work on compressors. I hired someone who says it's the compressor. And they're like, well, we can't trust anyone outside of our network. I'm like, that's fine, but we're pretty sure it's the compressor and the technicians that you've assigned do not work on that. Could you send someone else? And they're like, oh no, they'll work on it. We'll make them. And I'm like, mm, okay, can you do that? 
<laughs> if that's not something they work on. And they're like, no, no, we'll make sure they do that. We'll, we'll make sure they fix it if that is the part. So they come out a week and a half later. It might have been two weeks at this point. I'm a little delirious. And uh, they, they're they like, yep, it's the capacitor. We don't do that. So good luck. <laughs> they called the home warranty. And they're like, oh, you should have told us. I'm like, mm. We'll send out another technician in another two weeks. And at this point, obviously, I haven't gotten the washer part yet. I know what it's like to what their, their timeline is on these of how long it will take to order this part to get people out, etc. And I have like had it. Jake and I are eating out every night. We're in the middle of the reno and I have, I have no ducks left to give. And so I keep calling and I'm calling like every single day and I'm getting this first level of home warranty specialist who I talk to maybe like five or six of them. And each time they're, sometimes they're nice and other times they're just like, that really sucks for you. Good luck with that. <laughs> and I asked to speak to their manager and they're like, we'll have a manager call you back. Nope, not once. I started like taking down people's employee numbers and it gets to the point where I'm like crying on the phone because this is taking hours, hours and hours of my life. I'm having a hard time focusing on work. We don't have food at home. We don't even have cold water at home. We're trying to do this reno too and it's just stressing me the hell out. It's really tough being without a fridge. So I keep calling them day after day after day and they're like, we can't do anything until this second person comes out. Second person cancels on me. It just like mysteriously vanishes in the system, the whole ticket. And so I call them back and I'm like yelling at people and I I guarantee you, I don't usually yell at phone center people. I feel like that's one of the worst jobs there is on this planet, but I'm so upset. <laughs> I'm so upset because I don't know when I'm going to get this fridge and this is something that they're supposed to cover. And I peel over my contract page after page and nowhere in there does it say how long is acceptable for it to take. Like they never say we'll repair or replace your fridge within 21 days or your appliances within X amount of days. It's all very subjective. And one customer service tells me, person tells me this on the phone. And I'm like, so you're telling me it could just be the same as the washer. It could be three months without a fridge. And you think that's acceptable. And they're like, can't do anything. We'll have to, you know, when the second person comes out, we'll have to order the part. And uh, we don't know how long that's gonna take. So I'm just livid. And some stroke of uh, actual inspiration, it was a women's day and on, I found them on Twitter and they made a post about women's day. And I was like, I am a woman and a customer and I have not had a fridge for three weeks and no one can tell me what's going on or how soon I'll have a fridge. Um, if you would like to appreciate women, can you start with your customers, please? And next thing I know, I get a message from someone on the social media team for American Home Shield. And uh, they're like, okay, tell me your ticket number. Let's figure out what's going on. And they were actually very nice. I mean, I do social media. If someone brings something to our level, we immediately try to address it. And I guess we just slightly have a different, I don't know, maybe we can just send it to the right person. Whereas the first level of customer service might be trained in my theory, theoried opinion to uh, just make people go away. Maybe like make you mad enough, you'll just buy the fridge yourself. Which honestly, if you wanna get into the battle of a battle of wills with me when it comes to money, like good luck. Cause at that point it was about the principle of the thing. I had the money in my bank account. I could just go buy a fridge. It only takes about three days to get a fridge from Home Depot or Lowe's, maybe less. But I knew that if I bought one, they weren't gonna reimburse me unless it was through their proper channels. And at that point I was so mad. I was like, oh no, you're going to pay for it. I've gone through all of this. You are going to pay for it. That is what this contract is for. So yeah, I was at that level of crazy. And fortunately people from the Twitter were able to elevate it to whomever. And they were like, okay, we're going to go ahead and reprocess a replacement for both your washer and for the fridge. I'm kind of glad the washer thing happened because if not, then the fridge thing, I would not have had as much of a leg to stand on. So I was able to go in saying it's been three weeks without a fridge. How long is it going to take to get this part when it's been three months on this washer part? That was a decent argument. <laughs> which I believe it is. And so they were able to say, all right, here's how much take, they were able to take the information of the Whirlpool washer and the Whirlpool fridge and say, okay, we're willing to give you this, either a fridge worth up to this amount, and we'd be happy to order one for you through our processes and systems, which could take months. Um, or you can purchase a new washer and fridge from either like Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere similar with a one year warranty and we will reimburse you up to this amount. And for the washer, it was like 650 bucks. And for the fridge, it was like $1,300.
So I immediately went and ordered a washer and a fridge from Home Depot and Lowe's. It was whoever could get us one fastest. And I submitted the receipts. And then about a month later, they sent me checks for both. So happy ending to that. However, as you've probably saw if you watched my uh, March budget report video, during those three weeks we were without a fridge, we spent a thousand dollars on eating out. I could have just bought the fridge. But yeah, they replaced it on both things. I have a brand new fridge with a year warranty and a brand new washer with a year warranty. They're both nicer than the original ones I had. And I think I paid maybe 300 between them because you, you order it and they reimburse you up to a certain amount. So I found something within that range that was above it and then just paid out of pocket for any excess and shipping and stuff like that. It was not worth the fight. <laughs> In retrospect, I got mad and I wanted them to fix it out of principle. But if it were to happen again, I would just order the fridge and I'd have a new fridge in a couple of days. I certainly would not have gone through this had it been my tenant. That would have not been okay. As if I were a renter and I was without a fridge for three weeks waiting on like my landlord to get the home warranty to pay for one. No, I'd sue or something. So for that reason, if nothing else, I'm not renewing this home warranty because just the time and effort, I got a headache just thinking about it. The hours and hours and hours and all of the stress and the arguing with people, my life is worth more than that. And I would rather just spend 1500 bucks next time to get a new fridge than go through all of that. I'm very interested to hear what you guys would do. Would you fight with them over it or would you just pay the money? Secret question. So a few more notes. If you want them to do locks, because they say they, they push the lock and rekey thing really hard, especially when you first get it and they're like, we'll change all of your locks for you, just 75 bucks. If you do sign up for that service, they will do like a maximum of four locks and they send you this whole charge list of like all these extra fees that they're gonna do for these locks. And it would have ended up costing so much more to get the locks professionally redone than to just purchase the quick set smart key systems, which I did for every single door in my duplex. And those have a little hole and a key where what you can do is you can put in your current key, put in the smart set, pull the key out and then insert any other key, pull them both out. It re keys the thing. And then you have a new key. It takes five seconds. You don't have to uninstall the doorknob. Very, very cool. I have it listed in my Amazon shop. They also even have like the keypad ones. And so now I can rekey either unit of my duplex in five minutes. So if ever there is a security issue or if ever I change tenants, I can go through and rekey everything and it's much more secure. And quite frankly, <laughs> that was hundred percent worth it. And I'm glad I didn't pay for a professional locksmith to do it through the home warranty. Cause they were also like, if you have multiple types of keys, multiple types of door locks, we're going to charge you extra. It was just, it was, it would have been bananas to get eight locks replaced. Cause each like the deadbolt and the key count for two. Next, um, they will not blow out your dryer vents. Just a note. They also really push things like a preseason AC check. They've been pushing that a lot. I've gotten maybe 10 emails from them on that where they come out and they do not repair your air conditioning system. They just check it out. Like, I don't know if there are fluids in it or not, but they supposedly clean it and do that kind of stuff. And they want to charge you, I think a hundred bucks for it. It's like a professional or it's like an upgrade. It's a pro pro plus plan thing. And they really push it. And I asked my handyman, Chris, do I need to get one of those? I'm a new homeowner. I'm willing to learn. I want to maintain stuff. Um, he was like, now that's stupid. Just go get like an AC wash and do that. And he looked at both the units and he's like, these are fine. So apparently that's not necessary. Maybe, maybe you guys disagree. If you know something I don't, please tell me. And then finally, if you have a non-emergency fix or something that you're okay with it taking a while to get replaced, or it's something where just like a maintenance person or kind of a, a professional person does very regularly, it might be worth it to have. However, the moment that you venture over into replacement or having to order any parts for something, you're screwed. Screwed on this with at least this warranty company. Maybe others are better. However, <laughs> every time I've mentioned warranties before, I've had so many commenters say like mine was like they wouldn't do anything. It was a total waste of money. So I have a feeling there are a lot of warranty haters out there. And I didn't want to be one, <laughs> especially after the first couple of things where I utilized them and it worked really well. I didn't want to be a warranty company hater. I was even, I was really considering re-upping it just for the convenience. And I would absolutely not recommend paying out of pocket for one. 
if you can get in a home purchase, the sellers to pay for it for a year. Sure. Absolutely. But be willing to straight on battle them if it comes to it or just be willing to only use them for certain things. Would I recommend American Home Shield? No, not after all of that with the fridge. If I had not gone to Twitter, I would not have a new fridge, period. My contract would have expired before they got me something, guaranteed. And someone mentioned, when I mentioned this in another video, that it might only be people that are like influencers who have a little bit of a following that could even get like people from their Twitter to respond. Now, Twitter's my, my smallest platform. I have maybe 800 followers over there, which is not much. It's more than most people probably have. I don't use Twitter that much, but, and I, and I have no idea if they answered me because I complained on a Women's Day post and they wanted to deal with that situation or if they answered me because I have 800 followers over there or what, but it was the only way I was able to get it done. So those are my, uh, that's my notes and experience with a home warranty company and what I would recommend on it. I would love to know your experiences with home warranty company and if you would ever purchase one or if you've had a nightmare experience and how you were able to get them to pay for it or not. Next time I'm just, I'll just buy a new fridge. Like I'll just go to Lowe's.com and be like, Bloop. fridge. I have savings, that's what it's for. Not worth the uh, years off of my life and all of that stress and time mentally for having to argue with them. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it and subscribe. Cause once again, I'm trying to get to hundred K and I like talking about money and what things are worth it and what things are not and being transparent about my mistakes and my wins. And I think more people should talk about money like that. So if you would like to be one of those people, feel free to join up and hang out. We have fun here when we're not complaining and I'll see you guys next time.